Hi students, this lesson is on greatest common factor, also known as GCF. Our main focus is to find the greatest common factor of two whole numbers less than or equal to 100. You need to make sure that you have your composition notebook opened to the very next available page. You also need a sharpened pencil and also your lined post-it notes. Please remember that there's going to be times when I'm going to show you the watch and listen logo at which time I want you to put your pencil down and just watch and listen. I'm also going to be showing you the logo that says write this down so and that's exactly what that means is I want you to write it down exactly the way that you see it but during that time you're going to need to pause the video so you have time to do that before I keep talking. So let's begin. Now you see in the top left corner of the screen where it says write this down. So on your paper I would like for you to go ahead and title it greatest common factor GCF in parentheses. Before we can get started on how to find the greatest common factor we need to make sure that we know what a factor is. A factor is a number that you multiply. A common factor is a number that is a factor of two or more numbers. So now this is the watch and listen part. So go ahead and put your pencils down and I want to model for you how we would find com greatest common factor between two numbers, 27 and 36. So the first thing I'm going to do is go ahead and write down my 27 on my screen. Remember, you're just watching. And I'm going to think to myself, what numbers do I multiply to get the product of 27? Now, the word product means the answer to a multiplication fact. So I'm going to start with 1. Always start in order. I know 1 times 27. The next thing I'm going to think about is, does 2 go into 27? It doesn't because 27 is an odd number. And I'm going to continue with this pattern throughout the remainder of this problem. So I think to myself, does 3 go into 27? And it sure does, 9 times. So at the bottom of my screen here, I had listed that the factors of 27 are 1, 3, 9, and 27. And I got those from this area right here, my 1, my 3, my 9, and my 27. Now I'm going to do the same thing with 36. I know that 1 times 36 gives me 36. I know that 2 times 18 gives me 36. I know that 3 times 12 gives me 36. I also know that 4 times 9 gives me 36. So you'll notice that I went 1, 2, 3, 4. The next number would be 5. 5 times nothing will give you 36. The next number after that is 6, and yes, 6 times 6 gives you 36. So now I'm going to take my numbers and list them in order. 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, 9, 12, 18, and 36. Now I'm going to compare my two rows of numbers, and I'm going to find the largest number that they have in common. That's the same thing as saying the largest number that, that is the same. In this case, it happens to be 9. So my GCF for the numbers 27 and 36 is 9. All right, so now we're going to go back to writing some things down. Now that I've shown you how to find the greatest common factor, we're going to go ahead and write the steps right back on our sheet of paper. So remember, you're going to have to pause the video in order to get some of this stuff down. So we're going to begin with to find GCF semicolon. Actually, that's a colon. Number one, we're going to list all factors for each number. Step two, we're going to find the biggest common number that the two sets of numbers have. So let's go ahead and put an example in our books. So we're going to use the example of 18 and 24. So the first two factors of 18 would be 1 times 18. 2 times 9, and 3 times 6. We're going to do the same thing for the 24. We have 1 tw times 24, 2 times 12, 3 times 8, and 4 times 6. Now I want you to guys to take a moment to look at these two sets of numbers and find which number is the greatest common factor between these two numbers. 
hopefully you notice that six happens to be the greatest common factor in this set of numbers. So now we're going back to the watch and listen portion of this lesson. So go ahead and put your pencils down for a moment. What we're going to do here is we're going to find the greatest common factor of 32 and 56. However, this time I'm going to show you a different strategy or a different method. We're going to do this by using prime factor trees. They're done kind of a similar way, and I think some of you might prefer to do it this way, and I don't have a preference whether you do it the way that we just did it, with listing all the factors or whether you do it using prime factor trees. So let's go ahead and begin. So I'm going to start with the number 32. So once again, I'm going to pick two numbers that I multiply, which are my factors, to get 32. Now I don't want to do 1 times 32 on this one. So any two numbers, and the two numbers that came to my mind real quickly were 8 times 4. I know that one took off right away. <laughs> So I'm just backing up a little bit here. Okay, so the two numbers that popped into my head were 8 times 4. 8 times 4 gives me 32. So now I'm going to take the 8, and I'm going to break that apart into two smaller numbers as well. So the two numbers that obviously come to my mind for 8 would be 4 times 2. And then I'm going to do the same thing for the 4. I get 2 times 2. And then again for that bottom four, where I get another two times two. Now I'm going to draw branches from all these twos right over here to bring them down so they're all sort of on the same level. All right, so at the bottom of my 32, I have a two times two times two times two times two. So all these twos down here really mean they're being multiplied. So I'm going to stick a little multiplication dot in between them. So now I'm going to do the same thing with the 56. So two numbers when I multiply um, together to get 56 is 7 times 8. So now I'm going to look at that 8. Now the 7 is already a prime number. What that means is it only has two factors, 1 and the number itself, which would be 7. So there's nothing I could do to break that one further down. So to break 8 down, I'm going to do 4 times 2. Now I'm going to break that 2 down into a 2 times 2. So now you'll notice that all the numbers that are at the bottom of my branches are all prime numbers. I'm going to go ahead and bring them all down to the bottom of my tree. So the 7 gets brought down, and now the 2 is going to get brought down. And so I'm going to stick my little multiplication dots in between those. Okay, so here's what we're going to do next. What we have to do now is we're going to compare the numbers that are at the bottom of both trees. And we're going to circle the, the same ones that they have in common. Now, when you'll look here, you'll see, oh yeah, they've got twos in common. Well, we need to be specific with how many twos. So for instance, under the 32, it has a two here, and I'm gonna circle a two on the other side. Now I'm gonna go to the next one under the 32. So there's a, another two there, and under the 56, there's a two there. Now I'm going to go back to the 32. There's a 2 here and another 2 over there. Now, 32 has two more 2s left right over here. So you see these guys right over there, but there's no other 2s at all under the 56. So therefore, we have found that they have no more common prime numbers like that are together. So what we're going to do now is they have three sets of 2s that are the same, a two, a two, and a two. So if you notice here, there's three twos here and three twos here. So therefore, what we're gonna do with those twos is we multiply them together. Since there's three of them on each branch, we're gonna do two times two times two. So remember, let's do two times two first. Two times two is four, times another two gives you eight. The greatest common factor for 32 and 56 is eight. All right, so now we're gonna finish up our notes. So let's go back to your book. Now, I ran out of space on my sheet of paper. If you still have room on yours, go ahead and keep uh, continue on. But remember, we're gonna make factor trees and they're gonna branch downwards. So if you only have a couple of lines left, you might wanna turn your page and write on the back of the paper. I'm a teacher that is okay with you writing on the back of your papers. Okay, so factor trees. So let's go ahead and practice what we just um, watched. 
So let's try the numbers 72 and 36. So we're going to start with 72. You can pick any two numbers that you can multiply together that gives you 72. Now the two that come to my mind are 9 times 8. So you see that I wrote down 9 times 8. So now I'm going to take that 9 and I'm going to break it apart into two other numbers that when I multiply them, I get 9. So they're going to be broken up by 3 times 3. And I'm going to do the same thing with the 8. To get 8, I know I could do 4 times 2. So right now, my 4 is not a prime number yet. So I have to break that down one more time. So we're going to break that down to 2 times 2. So now I'm going to go ahead and bring down all my bottom branches and bring those numbers down. So I'm going to bring down the 3, the other 3, and then the 2. And notice that I put little multiplication dots on these guys here. And I went too far ahead again. All right, let me back up. All right, next, looking at the 36. So now I'm going to think the same thing. What two numbers do I multiply to give me 36? 9 times 4. So I'm going to break down my 9 into two numbers that give me 9 when I multiply them. And I'm thinking 3 times 3. And I'm going to do the same thing with the 4, another 2 times 2. All right, so now I have two sets of um, numbers here. I've got a set, not two sets, but I've got a set of numbers here, the 72 and the 36. I'm going to look at the bottom branches of all of them. I'm going to circle the numbers that they have in common. Now, both of them have a 3 in common. So I'm going to go ahead and just right now, before I forget, just write down that 3 because I just circled it. They have another 3 in common. They both have another 3 right there. So I'm going to write that down with the multiplication dot in between it. They each have a 2 that's in common. So I'm going to write that down. They each have another 2 that's in common. And I'm writing that down. Now, if you look at the 72, it has another 2 right over here. But it this guy over here has no other 2s. So that's it. That guy does not get used. So what you're going to do is you're going to take your 3 times 3 times 2 times 2. So right now we're looking at this area right over here. And we're going to multiply those two numbers together, or those four numbers together, excuse me. So we're going to start with the first two. 3 times 3 gives me 9, times 2 gives me 18, times 2 more is going to give me 36. And here you can see that I broke it down a little bit further for you. All right, so to finish up, on your lined post-it note, what I want you to do is I want you to use either method that we talked about today in this lesson, and I want you to find me the GCF of the number 16 and 48. Now make sure when you're done, you stick that line post a note right there in your notes so when I ask for it, you know exactly where it's going to be. All right, guys, that's it for now, and we'll see you back in class.